Dear brothers and sisters, in this session I'm going to explain the rules of Tayammum. Tayammum should be performed in a state of Wudu or Ghusl. And there are certain circumstances, certain occasions where a person should perform Tayammum. It is necessary sometimes to perform Tayammum in a state of Ghusl because of certain exigencies, certain urgent conditions which make Tayammum obligatory. Generally speaking, in the absence of water, one performs tayammum when, does not, when a person fails to find water or fails to fetch water, he performs tayammum. But of course, the grand religious authorities have enumerated seven cases, seven situations in which Tayammum has to be performed. Now, one by one, I will mention those seven cases, seven situations in which Tayammum should be performed. The first situation is when it is not possible to procure water, to find water. For example, you go on a journey and you are on a desert where it is unlikely to find water, where you cannot find water, even if you go far and wide, even if you search for water, there is no likelihood of finding water. In this case, you must look, you must perform them. Of course, when it is likely to find water, you have to look for it. And the grand religious authorities have said that you have to look for water going four directions. Looking for water in four directions. You have to go as far as 200 meters or 200 feet to see if you can find water. That is only when the ground is not even, when it's not leveled. And when it is uneven, you have to look for water. But if when it is even and everything can be seen, then it's not necessary to look for water because you can see and you can understand that there is no water within your reach. So, it's not, in that case, it's not necessary to look for water. Of course, if someone else tells you that there is no water here in the desert or even in, in the city where you are living, if someone who is re reliable tells you that there is no water to be procured, there is no water to be fetched, in that case, you can perform them. Now, in the absence of water, this is the first situation, in the absence of water, or when you cannot procure water, you must perform tayammum. What is the second situation? The second situation is that if a person is unable to procure water on account of old age or on account of weakness, 
or maybe due to fear of some beast, due to fear of thieves, or maybe because you do not have the means to procure water from a well, then in that case, it is necessary to perform tayammum. For example, there is water, but it is in a distance. It is at a distance from you. You are too old to go to that place and to fetch water. Or you are too weak to go and fetch water. It might be very close to you, but due to weakness, due to old age, you cannot get water to perform wudu. Or maybe you are afraid of thieves. You are afraid of decoids. You are afraid of wild animals. You cannot go out of your house. Or maybe you do not have the means. The water is there in the well, but you do not have the bucket to draw out water. In that case, it is necessary to perform tayammum. Now this is the second situation. This is the second case. What is the third situation? The third situation is if a person fears that if he uses water, his life will be endangered. For example, he is suffering from a certain disease, a certain problem, which makes him unable to use water. And if he uses water, it will not be good for him, it will not be good for his health, it will be harmful for him, or it will lead to some complications, to some serious problems. Maybe his ailment, his disease will be further intensified. Other complications will arise as a result of using water. Water is injurious to his health. Then in this case, it is necessary for him to perform tayammum. Of course, it's haram in this case for him to perform, to use water to perform wudu or to use water to perform ghusl. Because it is haram for a person in the first place to endanger one's health, to inflict harm or, or damage upon one's health. It is haram. And of course, it's necessary to note that it is not necessary to be certain, to be sure that water is harmful, that water is injurious to your health. It would be sufficient if it is likely, if it is probable, if you consider it probable that using water might be harmful to your health. In that case, it is not permissible to use water. Now, this is the second situation, the second condition under which it is necessary, the third condition under which it is necessary to perform tayammum. What is the fourth situation, the fourth case in which it is necessary to perform tayammum? The grand religious authorities have said that if a person fears that if he uses water for ghusl and wudu, he will be involved in hardship because of thirst. Now if he, he has, for example, sufficient water for drinking, and, and, and that water is also enough for him to perform wudu. But which is more important, which is more urgent? Is it necessary to protect one's life or to protect oneself from difficulty, from hardship, or to perform wudu. Of course, it is very clear that it is necessary to
to perform tayammum in order to in order to protect yourself from thirst from thirst and the situation where water is not available and where water is not easily found and the absence of a water or a well or a water or a, or a spring or in the absence of water sufficient water it's necessary to 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 keep water for drinking so you can perform tayammum and you can perform Uh, of course, and you can drink water in order to protect yourself from extreme or from acute thirst. This is the fourth situation. There are times that your body or your clothes becomes impure. It becomes najis. It becomes ritually unclean. There is no doubt that you cannot perform, that you cannot offer your prayers, and you cannot perform your religious deeds like entering uh, the holy Mecca or the a holy mosque with your body impure or with your clothes, clothes ritually impure. So in that case, it is necessary to perform tayammum in order to wash your body, in order to purify your clothes. Because performing prayers with impure clothes, with impure body, with with unclean body is not allowed and the prayer which is offered with unclean body or with a najis body is invalid in the first place so if you have enough water to only wash yourself to purify yourself then it is necessary to wash your clothes or to wash your body and For wudu, it is necessary to perform them. This is the fifth situation in which them is necessary and should be performed, and water should be used for washing your clothes or your body. What is the sixth situation in which performing Uh, tayammum is necessary. The grand religious authorities have said that if a person possesses such water or container which is not permitted to use, for example, there is a container of water which is either usurped, usurped it, it does not belong to its owner, it belongs to someone else, it has been taken by force, or the water has been obtained from an illegal source, from a haram source. In this case, you cannot use the container, you cannot use the water to perform tayammum. This is, of course, an exigency, an urgent condition, where you have to perform tayammum. Using a haram container is forbidden or using user water is forbidden for for making wudu so it is necessary to perform tayam and what is the seventh condition of course The seventh condition is that, that you have water, you have everything, 
you are not sick, you are not actually suffering from any ailment, and there is no fear of thieves, no fear of uh, diseases, no fear of um, any complications to arise. But you have very little time. You do not have the time to perform wudu. You do not have the, the time to perform ghusl. The time is so short that if you take action to perform wudu or to perform ghusl, you will miss the prayer. In that case, it is necessary to perform tayammum so as not to miss the prayer, so as to be able to offer the prayers in time, within the time, within the prescribed time. So this is the seventh condition and the seventh situation in which performing tayammum is obligatory. There are times when you wake up early in the morning, you find yourself in the state of ritual impurity. You find yourself, you find that you have entered the state of Janaba. Or you find that you have no time to perform wudu. Especially it happens early in the morning. It is, there is no time left for you to do these acts then it's necessary to perform, of course, tayammum so as not to miss the prayer. Missing a prayer is not allowed under any circumstances, under any situation. Prayer is the most important obligation, the most important wajib that should never be missed under any circumstances, under any situations. Unfortunately, Many people are very lethargic, very lazy. They don't care about prayers and they delay the prayers until the prayer is missed. They don't even care about it. No. Even if you are sick, even, even if you are in deathbed, even if you, it is the last moment of your life, you should offer your prayers. You should not miss your prayers. Even if you cannot walk, even if you cannot sit up, you should offer your prayers while sleeping, while if you are able to move your tongue, if you are able to move your eyes, if you know that it is time to offer your prayers, you should offer your prayers, even if you have to, sh to make gestures for prayers. That would be necessary, that is necessary. Of course, now there's a, another question arising as to what are the things on which we can perform tamu? What are the allowable objects on which we can perform them? Of course, the grand religious authorities, as per their understanding, as per their deductions, have said that it is necessary to perform tayammum on pure earth, not on dirty earth. And it is necessary to perform tayammum on dust, which comes from the earth. It is not permissible to perform tayammum on woods. It is not permissible to perform tayammum on leaves of trees. But it's permissible to perform sajda on these things. It's permissible to perform sajda on a stone, on a leaf of tree, on a grass, on, on, on grasses which are not eatable, which animals eat, but human beings do not eat. It is permissible to do sajda on these things. It is permissible to perform sajda on a mat. But it's not permissible to do tayammu on these things. The Maraje, the scholars, have said that it is necessary to perform tayammum on earth. It is permissible to perform tayammum on dust. And of course, in the absence of dust, in the absence of earth, it is permissible to perform tayammum on stone, on stone. 
even if there is no dust on the stone, based on priority, in the absence of dust, you can perform tayammum on stone. And of course, it is also permissible in the absence of earth, it is permissible to perform tayammum on gypsum, on limestone, on bricks. But as a measure of precaution, as long as dust is there, as long as earth is there, you should avoid performing tayammum on a stone, performing tayammum on gypsum, performing tayammum on limestone or other similar objects. And in the absence of all these things, you can perform tayammum on the dust which settles on your clothes, on maybe on a table, on an object. The object could be anything. If you find dust on an object, you can perform tayammum on it, provided that you do not have access to other sources, to other to, 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 to earth outside your home or outside the place where you are living. So the priority has to be observed, the preference has to be given to dirt, to dust and to earth. Now, another question arises as to how we should perform tayammum. Of course, performing tayammum is very easy. It's not difficult to perform it and you can learn it very easily. The grand religious authorities has, have said that when you are going to perform tayammum, because tayammum is an obligatory action, it is an alternative and it is an act of duty, you have to perform it with the intention of Qurbat, with the intention of seeking proximity to God. So first of all, the niyat is necessary. The intention is an important segment and an essential element within every religious act, including them. When you have made your niyat, when you have formed your niyat, then you will have to of course, put your hands together, these two hands, put them together, and then hit on the ground, on the dust, or on the stone. Hit them together, or put them, place them on the ground, and then you have to pull it, pull both hands on your forehead, on your forehead, because it's important to pull your hands on your, with all your palms on your forehead, beginning from the, from the place where the hair grows, you have to cover the whole forehead, and then pull it downward, not upward, pull it downward until, and including your eyebrows, until it reaches your, the tip of your nose. You have to remove your hand, pulling down, from the end, from the bottom of your nose, the eyebrows have to be included as an obligatory precaution. The, ob the eyebrows have to be included. And you have to make sure that there is no nothing, no obstruction on your forehead. And if there is an obstruction, you have to remove it before doing it. Once you have pulled your hand on your forehead downward, finishing with your nose, then you have to pull with the entire palm of your left hand 
on the back of your right hand, on the back of your right hand, leaving no space untouched, you have to pull it a little over the wrist, over the wrist. You should include the wrist and a little over the wrist to make sure that no part of, your, of the back of your hand is left untouched, unpulled. You have to do that. And then you will have to do the, the left hand. You have to pull with the entire palm of your right hand over the left hand, over the back of the left hand. That is finished. And of course, the Grand Religious Authorities have said that you can do, you can strike your hand once again, but it's not obligatory. It's not obligatory. You can, after pulling your hands on your forehead and on your face, down, down to your nose, you can, after you have pulled your hand over the left, over the right and the left hand, you can hit your palms on the ground once again and do it, do the same with the right hand and the left hand. But it's not obligatory to hit your palms on the ground twice. Twice. It's a recommended act. If you do it, it would be better. And if there is sand, of course, it is permissible to perform tayammum on sand also. After da dust, after earth, performing tayammum should be on sand. And if there is sand on your, on your palm, you can hit it like this. You can hit so that the dust falls off, falls down. And then you can pull, it, pull your hands on your forehead and on the back of your right hand and then on the back of your left hand. This is allowed. There is no problem, no objection in doing so. These are the rules regarding tayammum. I hope I have explained the rules. I have given the necessary information regarding tayammum. Inshallah, in the next section to come, I will begin explaining the rules of prayer. The rules of prayer. But before concluding, I should say that with one tayammum you can perform, you can do all the religious acts with which you can, with, with which uh, purity is required. If you perform one wudu, you can, you can offer many prayers with it. You can offer many deeds of religious actions, many religious deeds, many deeds which require tayammum, which require tahara, ritual purity. The same is true with tayammum. You can perform as many prayers as you can with one tayammum. And one thing that I should not be forgotten, and, and that is, if you are in the state of wuzu and you have no water to perform wudu, you cannot break your you cannot break your wudu. You cannot make your wudu wide. You should keep it until you are able to offer your prayers. And then you can break it. But if you want to perform sexual intercourse, and you know that there is no water to perform ghusl, and you know that there is no water to be procured in order to purify yourself, again, you are allowed to perform tayammum and there is no, to, uh, to have sexual intercourse, and then you can perform tayammum. There would be no problem in doing so. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.